Uh, okay, uh, welcome everyone to one of the last sessions uh, during the last uh, day in uh, this summit. Um, today I'm going to present uh, uh, the magma related topic, another topic for magma, uh, but this one is a little bit different. It's basically uh, tells you how to build um, an inexpensive carrier Wi-Fi network on your, on your laptop with Magma, right? For most of the deployments, you need servers, uh, you need infrastructure. But uh, I got inspired uh, by my company, by Mirantis, which deployed uh, carrier Wi-Fi at the customer. Um, and I decided to do the same uh, just on my laptop. Um, my name is Wojciech Navrot. I work uh, for Mirantis uh, for four years. I'm currently a network architect. I used to be a network engineer. And uh, I work on Magma uh, partially out of my working hours. Um, it was, um, you know, hobbyistic, um, hobbyistic topic. And I'm happy and proud and can share it with you today. Um, the background, what is carrier Wi-Fi? It's a deployment of big number of Wi-Fi access points by the mobile operator uh, in dense geographic areas to decongest the LTE network, right? The user, the subscriber, authenticates with a USIM card, the same USIM card used for LTE, and uh, the user doesn't have to provide password to connect the network, right? Uh, what was the purpose of, of uh, what is the purpose of this lab? First of all, I, I wanted, because you get lots of terms, lots of technologies, protocols. I wanted to learn all of them because I didn't have clue on diameter or IPCAN, on uh, 3GPP recommendations, PCRF, uh, and so on and so forth. So I wanted to understand it and uh, and to learn how the services I'm provided from, from my mobile operator work, how to define data plans, for instance, right? So all of this functionality uh, is provided by my lab. That is not only the basic connectivity for the UE, for the mobile, mobile phone, but this is also um, um, the policies, which are basically disconnecting uh, the user uh, equipment when a specific amount of data is consumed or the user's internet slows down to two megabits per second, for instance, if uh, the uh, uh, entire data is consumed. Um, the challenges, actually everything was a challenge for me in the beginning. I needed to find an access point um, a Wi-Fi access point, um, which would be suitable uh, for the lab. I needed uh, something like enterprise class. I had like a basic access point at home, uh, which didn't support um, JIRA tunneling or um, sophisticated authentication methods. So I've made a research and found um, the Cisco access point on the internet. I'll show you later which one. Um, also, I initially bought some test using cards with pre-configured or built-in um, confidential keys. But um, uh, it turned out that this um, using cards used a uh, XOR algorithm um, <laughs> rather than million edge <laughs> and the authentication failed. Uh, so I needed to, to buy um, the USIM um, card uh, reader writer and some blank USIM, um, uh, get to know which parameters are relevant, uh, burden, burn them in the USIM cards, and it took like <laughs> several weeks uh, until it got, uh, I had it worked. Um, yeah. Um, the supplementary part of this talk today is the documentation, which is available here. Just scan the QR code, you'll get like 200 pages of documentation uh, containing um, 
detailed guidelines, how to uh, build the lab, how to interconnect um, um, uh, physical peripherals, how to configure services, how to configure data uh, uh, plans. It's basically fully functional environment, production-like environment with all the elements. Um, what is missing is online charging system. Um, well, I didn't find actually the free software I could use in this lab. But I'm convinced if I found something like that, I, I could make use of it, right? But this is not super critical uh, uh, for the lab. Um, okay, the hardware. What, 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 do, you, what do you need? Uh, first of all, the access point. Uh, this one, a Cisco Aeronet 1140 series, is just fine. Um, for, the, uh, for, for the lab. You, you can have it even for less than 20 bucks at eBay. Um, so even sometimes the power supply is more expensive than the access point. What you usually have to do is to uh, 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 well, um, perform the, the firmware uh, upgrade because most of the access points uh, available uh, on eBay are uh, supplied um, as a um, Thin clients, uh, you need a standalone client which works without the um, wireless controller, right? Um, the other item you need to, to, to purchase is the using card reader and writer. Uh, this is absolutely a must uh, because you need to burn in some confidential parameters into using cards in order to make uh, them work. The using cards are used only for authentication. I'm not deploying the LTE part in this lab, but uh, the EAP uh, algorithm, AKA, AAP, AKA, uses the using card for authenticating the subscriber. Right? So, so this, this device can be purchased on uh, one of the you know, Chinese uh, portals for around 50 bucks. And five blank using cards are included, so you can define five different data plans um, for for every single subscriber, right? And 70 bucks is what I spent for the hardware. The rest of peripherals and devices are existing ones. I, I found some, you know, uh, old Android and iOS phones. Um, okay. <laughs> um, Actually, the most expensive part you need, but you probably already have, is, is, uh, is a notebook. I use my MacBook Pro uh, with 16 gigs of, of RAM and with quad-core uh, processor, and it's just fine. Um, this Mac has no uh, you know, built-in Ethernet port, so I needed two adapters. You need two adapters, uh, two Ethernet adapters, because with, with the first one, you interconnect the access point. The other one is uh, uplink to the internet. And this router is my home router. Actually, OK, this one is like a little bit advanced, but can be any uh, wired router uh, with um, configured the HCP. Uh, software, OK. Um, Of course, on top of the Mac OS operating system, uh, I'm having a VirtualBox, Docker Desktop, um, Python, and Vagrant, right? On the top of it, we've got Magma, and it's for components, orchestrator, network management system, federation gateway, and carrier Wi-Fi access gateway. Carrier Wi-Fi access gateway, uh, is specific to the carrier Wi-Fi setup. In the LTE EPC setup, you got the access gateway here, right? And one of the most important components in the lab is uh, the PCRF component, policy charging uh, uh, rules function, where the data plans are sitting. I will show you later on an ex um, example data plan uh, I, I configured uh, here and we'll explain how it works. Um, I'm using pretty old um, 
magma commit around July 2021. Uh, because, well, I've been <laughs> working on this lab uh, for the last two years. So this commit worked for me, and sometimes when I upgraded um, magma, basically some functionality stopped working. So this one was stable for me, so I, I didn't touch it as it worked. Right, and here we got like high level uh, physical connectivity. It looks simple, really. So one uh, Ethernet port of, um, of, of the laptop is used for interconnecting the access point, while the other one is the uplink um, to the internet. Um, okay, this is the entire setup, um, software and, and hardware. Um, regarding functions of respective components. What we got here, we got an orchestrator as the control plane for Magma networks and, and gateways. It exposes uh, Nordbound uh, REST API um, used for configuring networks, gateways, and for um, getting um, metrics. And also, it's uh, equipped in a, a southbound interface used for configuring gateways, uh, streaming configuration to gateways, and for collecting metrics. Orchestrator acts as a relay between carrier Wi-Fi access gateway and federation gateway, so the all, uh, connectivity between gateways passes through uh, the orchestrator. We got the network management system, which is optional component. Um, it's not really needed uh, um, for the lab, but it simplifies admin's life because it allows you to add uh, some configuration items like networks, like gateways through the uh, graphical interface, and it also exposes uh, metrics, events, logs, so um, it was discussed yesterday during the presentation um, on Magma as well. Don't want to spend much time on it. Um, gateways, um, carrier Wi-Fi access gateway. This is this, uh, the, this um, Wi-Fi specific component, right? It's the implementation of uh, of, uh, of PCF, PCEF. Um, it has OVS, open vSwitch in it, which is um, connected to two uh, 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 interfaces of the SWAG VM, right? And there is a number of containerized services in it, right? So, so we've got the A service. Uh, this is the component which uh, is used for uh, UE authentication. Uh, it interacts uh, with the access point. We've got also a Radius server, which is actually a part of a service. Uh, it's a separate well, service here, but uh, they both interact with each other. Um, we've got Session D, the component responsible for um, management of the IP concession. Pipeline D, which uh, installs flows into um, OVS and policy DB, DB which stores uh, static PCC rules. Right? Um, the federation gateway, this is another VM. So, actually, okay, we've got three VMs here. We've got CWAC, carry Wi Fi access gateway, federation gateway, also placed in the VM, and free PCRF. Orchestrate and NMS are sitting directly um, in, um, in containers on the top of uh, Mac OS op uh, operating system, right? So, Federation Gateway um, is used for um, um, as a proxy, as a relay uh, between the gRPC and, and diamet diameter interfaces. Uh, SWX and GX. SWX, diameter interface, uh, interconnects uh, um, the fact, um, well, interconnects maybe SWAG with, with the HSS and, um, 
and, and the session proxy component here interconnects uh, the session D in SWAG with uh, PC, uh, PCRF, police in charging rules uh, uh, function. Uh, we use um, mainly, actually only, um, virtual box networking to interconnect components. Uh, virtual bo box NAT interfaces, uh, virtual box NAT network, and two bridge adapters. So all that requ required functionality uh, is doable with virtual box. Um, I got the new notebook from my company, uh, which is MacBook Pro M1, but unfortunately there is no virtual box released for this platform. So still using my old um, um, uh, Intel-based MacBook Pro. Um, this is more or less everything about the, the lab setup. So briefly, how it works, right? Because, okay, we, we, we've got the uh, Android or, um, or iOS uh, 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 phone with the USIM card uh, uh, with some confidential parameters uh, burned in the USIM card, right? And this UE is configured uh, with the Wi-Fi profile. So first of all, um, the UE uh, joins the, um, the SSID configured here on the success point, let's say Magma. It gets associated and after that it, it starts the uh, uh, EAP, aka authentication uh, process by exchanging uh, EAP messages with the AAA uh, um, server uh, placed here. So, um, on this radio layer, we got EAP over LAN, and here, between the access point A service, we got um, EAP over radius, right? So, uh, EAP, aka, is an uh, uh, authentication method for mutual network and and using authentication, meaning that the uh, UE uh, authenticates the network and the network authenticates the UE. So, um, during the authentication, uh, both the UE and, and AA server make use of some um, confidential uh, information. Uh, bird in the USIM card and, and um, uh, configured on the HSS here, home uh, uh, subscriber server. Um, these are so-called uh, input parameters, which enter the millinage algorithm and produce some output. This output is partially exchanged between the UE and the AA server and as a result, we uh, get successful or unsuccessful uh, authentication. The AA uh, service performs a lookup into uh, AHS to check if the, uh, if the mobile phone is allowed to use that non-3GPP access method, which in our case is Wi-Fi. If this is explicitly allowed in a config file, the uh, UE gets authenticated and authorized from, um, uh, from HSS. After that, um, uh, a lookup into uh, PCRF takes place for uh, the PCC rule uh, and for uh, the uh, service units. Uh, right, so in general, from PCRF, um, uh, the CWAC downloads uh, uh, the PCC rule or flows to be installed in OVS data path. And also, uh, the, the CWAC gets the quota granted for the user. Um, so, if the authorization from PCRF is, is completed, Right, uh, the user is uh, EAP associated and starts, and the UE starts the DHCP DORA process, meaning that 
Okay, here the, um, the radio transmission is um, mm, protected or encrypted with uh, AES. And through the Jiri tunnel uh, between the access point and, and CWAC, uh, the DHCP uh, um, uh, messages are exchanged between the e, uh, UE and the router here. When the IP address is obtained, uh, the EU starts, um, you know, sending or receiving data uh, with the internet, and the usage and the data usage uh, is um, periodically uh, reported to, to PCRF. If the entire data pack for the user is consumed for a validity period, like, for instance, one hour, these are the value I configured just for, for the lab purpose. Uh, the UE uh, gets disconnected and uh, deauthenticated and disassociated from the, uh, from the access point. I got four data plans, four different data plans, and for using cards. Um, this, every data, uh, data plan is, is different. Uh, the first one uh, is like if the user exceeds 100 megabytes in total. Uh, within one hour, he gets automatically disconnected until the new validity period begins. The other uh, data plan uh, is the user gets 200 megabytes uh, for one week, and if this limit is reached, then internet slows down to two megabits per second. And this um, rate limit is done here on CWAC. Um, the packets are marked um, uh, um, here in, in OVS, in Open vSwitch, and the rate limiting here is, uh, is realized on physical interfaces with uh, Linux TC. Um, okay, uh, access point config essentials. Uh, for, for, for those who, who, who know Cisco, it, it looks familiar. Um, what do we have here? Of course, we need to configure radius. Uh, radius servers is sitting inside um, the CWAG uh, gateway. Uh, then we configure lists for authentication and accounting, and we point out, you know, the radius server groups we configured over here. Then we go to um, SSID configuration. Uh, all the traffic from the Magma SSID is uh, well uh, sent through the uh, tunnel. The tunnel is configured here. It's the basic Jiri tunnel with the source IP uh, being a BVI interface of the access point and the destination IP which is carrier uh, Wi-Fi access gateway IP address. Uh, the authentication is open and EAP, uh, meaning that uh, we've got null authentication. Initially, the, um, uh, the UE access the uh, access point without any authentication. And after that, the EAP message exchange starts, right? Um, and we use the EAP uh, methods list configured over here. Um, what we got also is that, okay, um, the, radio one, the Radio Zero interface I, I'm using is 2.4 uh, gigahertz interface. Uh, is uh, encrypted with uh, uh, AES. Um, and we place the SSID magma we configured here on the specific radio. The feature? which is pretty desired for the setup is the radius dynamic authorization. It's used for, uh, for PODs, for packets of disconnects. If uh, uh, the CWAC uh, decides to disconnect user because the entire quota have been exhausted, then the POD radius packet is sent to the access point and the access point uh, authenticates and disassociates the, uh, the uh, client. Um, okay, Wi-Fi profiles. This is uh, 
what you have to configure on, on mobile phones in order to, to uh, make them work with Magma. Um, Android is a piece of cake. You just go to um, network settings, you add a new network, you specify the name, you configure an access point, and um, this security um, algorithm here, uh, .1x EAP with AKA. Unfortunately, iOS is <laughs> a little bit <laughs> tricky because you, you can't configure EAP uh, method um, uh, directly from the user interface. What you need to do is to create a profile. It's an XML file with, um, with some uh, relevant para parameters. And this profile must be saved, must be um, submitted somewhere um, to, drop, uh, to, to, to the, um, the drive, the uh, cloud drive like Dropbox or, or Google Drive, and must be downloaded and installed um, from, from iPhone. Um, uh, here you got the link. The link is also available in my uh, documentation. So if you decide, ever decided to build a lab, uh, you can uh, use it as a reference. Um, subscriber config. This is pretty interesting part. Uh, this is related to, uh, to using programming. I spent pretty much time uh, uh, trying to uh, figure out which, par which using parameters are, um, are relevant here. So for EAP, AK uh, to work, you need uh, to configure um, uh, MC, uh, subscriber key, OP key, and also there is the AMF parameter. This uh, for mentioned parameters must match at both sides, at the using card and at magma, more precisely on HSS. On HSS side and home subscriber server, you got HSS YAML file with the subscriber specified where you have like MC numbers and authentication keys. And also you've got the statement non-3GPP enabled, meaning that for this specific subscriber, Wi-Fi access is allowed. If you change it to, to, to false, this subscriber uh, would be rejected during the authentication uh, uh, process because it would not be authorized uh, by HSS. Right? Also, the OP code here must be configured. That's the global value for all um, subscribers and you configure it through uh, orchestrator API, right? Uh, the AMF code here, uh, it's GAA, this is base64 value. Uh, it, it, it is uh, 8000 in hex. I didn't find this parameter um, uh, in, uh, uh, well, in the software I, I use for programming using car, but I believe this is the default value, which is um, already burned in, in the using card, and I didn't have to change anything. So, if you want to make sure that authentication uh, 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 will be um, completed successfully, make sure that these parameters are configured um, exactly the same at both sides. Um, data plans. Um, okay. Initially, I, I configured. Um, authentication, but the lab was not really spectacular because, okay, I had the omnipresent rule uh, allowing for uh, internet access for all subscribers, and um, actually I made it work. Okay, the user authenticated and could access the internet, but I couldn't do any policy decision, like any conditions, any conditional access. So. Um, I spent some time um, looking for uh, free uh, software I could use as a, uh, as PCRF component. Uh, um, th this is, for, for, for those who don't, don't know what, what it is, this is like, um, it's not a part of Magma. It's external component uh, used by uh, mobile network operators for 
creating uh, policies for subscribers, right? Um, we've got 100 megabytes per hour data plan uh, defined in, in, in PCRF. And in eight basic steps, I'll show you how to configure this data plan. This data plan is uh, like when the user connects uh, to the Magma um, SSID, um, the usage reporting starts, and if the uh, entire 100 megabytes is consumed by, by the user, the user gets automatically disconnected. But after one hour, the um, the accumulator, which accumulates the, um, the data usage, is reset, and uh, the subscriber can again access the network. Right. So, what do we need to do to uh, configure such a data plan? Okay, we uh, get to um, interfaces offered by uh, free PCRF software. You can find more about the software in the documentation I'm, I'm providing. Uh, but what do you, what do you need to, to configure? You need, uh, first of all, you, you need to add uh, a subscriber. You basically add the IMC number and the uh, description. That's the definition of the subscriber. Then you create a service. Um, service itself, it's another ID and description. It doesn't have any uh, configuration. It's just a label using in policy selection process, which I will show you on the next slide. Here in step three, we assign service to subscriber. In step four, we define the accumulator, uh, accumulator schema. What is the uh, accumulator schema? It's actually... Um, a kind of schema for accumulator, literally. It defines um, some levels for the accumulator. For instance, level full. This is uh, one and eight zeros, which is uh, 100 millions uh, bytes, which is 100 megabytes. So this is exactly what we have here in the title. Um, and we've got the reset period. Uh, this is the period of time uh, for which the accumulator is valid and after which the accumulator is reset, right? Then we create the accumulator itself. Again, it has just an ID and it has a reference to the accumulator schema, right? And when we configure these two items, four and five, we assign accumulator to subscriber. All these configuration items uh, can be observed here in a mini CRM at uh, another uh, graphical interface from the free PCRF. Uh, you can see here, okay, um, the subscriber itself defined by the MC number. Right. Then we have the accumulator. We can see the validity period, uh, 7.54 up to 8.54, meaning that uh, it's valid for one hour and it resets uh, uh, every single hour. Right. And we got the value if we connect it to the uh, Magma um, Wi-Fi network. We could see that the uh, that the value get increased every couple of seconds, right? So, if the value here uh, reaches the level full 100 megabytes, I'll show you what happens uh, on the next slide. Um, okay, um, the, the previous configuration items. Uh, were uh, configured using um, a CLI and, uh, and the basic um, API calls. Uh, these steps are more complex than previous steps, right? Because uh, we get two configuration files, um, a rules XML and an engine Lua. In the first file, we configure policy. 
Uh, this is uh, what the policy contains. Policy contains uh, the charging rule to be sent to CWAC, to Carrier Wi-Fi Access Gateway, to PCEF. Uh, it contains the name, uh, the flows to be installed uh, in OVS, and also the monitoring key, right? Uh, so this is the basic definition uh, for the um, policy and for the charging rule. Here is uh, how the policy is enforced. We've got GX select policy function uh, with some basic ifs, right? So first of all, we check if the service is active for a subscriber. We assigned this specific server to the subscriber, so this condition is, is met. This, uh, this service is active for the subscriber. And then the uh, function checks the accumulator level. Um, if it's full uh, within the validity period, the uh, um, the EMC, the subscriber, is rejected, meaning that uh, the subscriber gets immediately disconnected, or if the subscriber tries to connect to, to Magma network, uh, this attempt will be rejected as well, right? In the other case, if the accumulator is not full, uh, the policy we configured in step seven is installed. Uh, that means that uh, the PCC rule, uh, the uh, dynamic charging rule, is sent to the uh, carry Wi-Fi access gateway. The flows are uh, installed, and the usage data usage for the uh, for the charging rule is uh, reported with this uh, monitoring uh, key. So this is more or less how configuration of data plans look li looks like in uh, PCRF. Magma in action, I, I, I really regret I have not enough time uh, to provide a demo, because uh, I, uh, I, I would need uh, definitely uh, like around one hour or even more. Uh, but few verification steps you uh, should uh, perform to make sure that Magma is working. Actually, the moment of truth is here. Uh, if you get uh, a Magma uh, a connected message on your mobile phone, that means that authentication and authorization from HSS and, and, PC, and PCRF was successful. Uh, you can also verify this on the access point uh, by issuing the dot eleven associations command. Uh, you can observe the MAC address of the mobile phone, the IP address it obtained, the state, EAP associated, right? Uh, the key management type, encryption. Actually, there are lots of other parameters, but uh, I truncated the output because it was not relevant. Um, also, this command is very useful on the carrier Wi-Fi access gateway, namely uh, the, wait, hold on. Uh, the TCP dump, um, yes, um, with port 18 to, uh, uh, 12. It's, it's a radius port. Uh, the last message, access accept, sent by CWAC to uh, the access point, says that the authentication and authorization from HSS and a PCRF was successful, right? And uh, we've got also a nice tracing tool on, on PCRF, which allows you to uh, follow all possible uh, messages between the Federation Gateway and um, and, uh, and free pairs PCRF VM. Um, this is basically um, GX interface, um, GX diameter interface. So all the CCR, CCIs, initial, uh, update, terminate, 
can be observed here. This is a very useful tool for tracking, um, you know, um, the communication and which allows you uh, to, um, um, to debug uh, all problems. Sometimes, you know, there is like a loss of connectivity between uh, the PCRF and, and Magma. The user cannot connect then uh, um, from um, the packet tracer, you, you can see that that basically no CCR messages are reaching these components. Uh, okay, this is more or less all from my side. Uh, it was probably a little bit longer than it should be, but it really took me two years to, to make this lab working. I'm encouraging you for uh, trying to build the lab yourselves. Everything is documented. Um, if you got any questions, feel free to ask right now. <laughs> Thank you. Could you use the microphone, please, maybe? Uh. So the one thing I don't really grok is the, the, the point of the lab. Is it so you understand how to, to build a carrier on a laptop? From or? one hand, yes. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, I wanted to make a production-like environment just for a couple of bucks. Not using um, emulators, UE emulators, or any kind of emulators. I wanted to make it work uh, with the real equipment, my mobile phone, uh, right? Uh, so it really works. I can run a speed test, uh, for instance, and observe that the internet slows down to two megabits per second if specific, you know, threshold is exceeded, for instance, right? But, there, but there's no LTE in the picture at all. No, right? it's not. It's all, all I thought of it. LTE, and maybe it will be the next step. But for me, it was like, uh, okay, the radio didn't matter. Uh, the um, the would be uh, cost like five hundred dollars a run. Yeah. Then I needed the license spectrum for it for Wi-Fi. I don't need anything actually, right? So it was also the reason for you know trying uh, with with Wi-Fi rather than LTE. So it's a learning exercise. Uh, yes, yeah. it is. And, and and Magma is just an EPC, right? Uh, yes. And do they have a 5GC as well? Uh, what? A 5GC, 5G core? A Magma, yes. Did I mean, do? okay, uh, CWAC, this is, um, CWAC is actually a, um, a focused, um, mm, CWAC is implemented in a separate gateway, a carrier Wi-Fi access gateway. Um, um, access gateway, regular access gateway, which is being developed um, and maintained actively by Magma, is the implementation of Evolve Packet Core. Yeah. Right, so maybe as a next step, I'll try with the access gateway in LTE, but right now I need a break. <laughs> Because yeah, I mean, it, it looks, took me really I mean, much it's time. Amazing amount of, of work. Uh, yeah, your your, it was just it an took a lot of patience. Integration, <laughs> integration work. I, I just yeah. had to find some components and to put them together to make them work, right? And to you know use different protocols, uh, debug lots of lots of problems, because okay, there have been some bugs in software. Uh, there was some misconfiguration. Yeah, it looks like a, a labor of love, right? I mean, you wanted to uh, learn, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, um, first of all, that's great, really. I mean, I think you're the first one in the world who made this with open source. There, until now, I don't know. I, I'm searching for projects like this for years now. And they're, like you said, they're demonstrators or simulators or anything, but the real thing you never could do. And I think this is the first time that someone was able to do the, the real thing, right, from, from end to end. And I think it's more, more than a demo, because actually this is something in rural areas or in, in areas where you can't, can't you know, put, put a big, you know, um, 
tower or something in there, um, but you have probably some connection in other ways. You can provide there a means of internet and things like that. So I think it's really a good work. And um, wow, I'm really impressed. Congratulations for that. So Thank no you. question just saying this. Thanks. Ah, uh, there is no Ansible, actually. <laughs> okay, thank you.